We work hard as physicians to take care of the health and well-being of our patients. But when it comes to our money, do we have the same condition of care? Probably, probably not. Let's change that together. Welcome to the Financial Freedom for Physicians podcast, where we'll fight and advocate for your financial literacy. As always, I'm your host, Dr. Christopher Liu. Thanks for being here. Let's jump into the show. Hey guys, I want to welcome you guys to the Financial Freedom for Physicians podcast. We've got a great episode this week. Uh, before we begin, please hit the subscribe button as well as the notifications bell and be sure to like, comment, and share if you like this episode and we'll get into this week's sponsor and show. Today's episode is sponsored by Dr. Heather Fork of Doctors Crossing. Dr. Heather Fork is a retired dermatologist based out of Austin, Texas, and she is a career coach and strategist and the founder of The Doctor's Crossing. She's come out with this new course called LinkedIn Networking for Physicians. The significance of this course is that in today's hyper-competitive, hyper-dynamic, ever-changing economy, success is all about information, speed, access, networks, and execution speed. So part of your success in today's economy relies on a strong network of collaborators, partners, and acquaintances who can help you accomplish your goals a lot faster and more efficiently. So if you're operating under the mantra of doing it alone or doing it all by yourself, there are better, faster, easier, and more efficient ways to get things done today. You can save a lot of time, energy, and money by learning how to leverage social media to network online. Dr. Heather Fork's course is a brand new course designed to teach you step-by-step how to efficiently network using online LinkedIn social media networking tools, tactics, and strategies. She's been a pioneer in the field of physician counseling, physician burnout, career transitions, and physician coaching. Her course is a six-module course with 22 videos where you can learn at your own pace, on demand, and teach you how to strategically use LinkedIn to your advantage. It also has a bonus PDF guide, how to rock your informational interviews. So if you're interested, you can check out the course in the link in the show notes below. Also, as a special bonus, you can also check out Dr. Fork's Carpe Diem resume kit that when purchased with the LinkedIn course, you get a 23% discount. Or if you want to purchase separately, you can click on the link in the show notes below as well. So Thanks for listening and on to the show. So welcome everybody to this week's podcast episode for the Financial Freedom for Physicians podcast. And we want to wish you happy holidays. Um, As usual, we tout four types of freedom. The first is financial. Second is emotional, time, and location freedom. And my personal mission is to empower early career, high income earning professionals to achieve financial freedom so that they can work when they want to and work on their own terms. So today we have a special guest, Travis Hornsby. He's the founder and CEO of Student Loan Planner, and we'll introduce him and uh, we'll go from there. So, hey, Travis, welcome. How are you doing today? Doing great, Chris. Excited to be here. Yeah. Uh, I'm so glad that, uh, you know, your team reached out to me. And like I said, I'm trying to uh, introduce novel services, products, guests, ideas to the uh, my followers, which are mostly physicians. And so let's get started with t- talk a little bit about you, yourself, um, what Student Loan Planner is and how you got started. Well, um, I'm kind of a weird nerd. Like I was a bond trader back in my former life. Then I met my wife, who's a physician, and she got really screwed over with the public service loan forgiveness program. Like she got really bad advice lost about $200,000 getting the wrong advice on our student loans. And with my bond trading skills, Chris, I said, you know, I struggle to get an extra 0.1% of return for our bond funds, but it's really easy to save hundreds of thousands of dollars with uh, people like my wife who have a lot of student loan debt that are getting bad advice. So I saw a bigger opportunity there. And the tools that I built with the, the Excel skills that I learned doing bond trading kind of went viral. And that's what kind of caused a ton of people to reach out and ask for for help managing their student loans. 
Uh, and when I say managing their student loans, I'm talking about like, you know, 100K and up student loans, right? It's pretty straightforward. If you have 30,000, you know, you need to pay it back. But physicians have all kinds of opportunities available to them, a lot of which they're not even aware of. Uh, and that's what we have done with Student Loan Planner. So it started out just me. And now we've got six uh, other six consultants, CFP, CFA type consultants, and we're adding three more uh, for 2022. So we've advised about 1.7 billion of student loans, which is makes us the largest uh, provider of student loan advice in the country. Awesome. Sounds like a really uh, impact, very, um, looks like you went from a more career driven to more uh, mission driven purpose. And it looks like your experience on uh, with trading and finance really helped you. Um, so we know we all know that you know student loans are um, a really big problem in today's society. You know, it costs so much to go to undergraduate and you know professional school. And um, so, tell us uh, what types of uh, clients does your um, your firm service? I would say maybe about fifteen percent or twenty percent of the clients are physicians. Maybe another fifteen twenty percent are each are dentists, veterinarians, lawyers, uh, nurse practitioners, chiropractors, basically any professional, you know, degree required occupation is, is someone that we've made hundreds of plans for physicians. I think we made about a thousand plans for, so, uh, there's all kinds of opportunities, right. For physicians, you know, Chris, I think you were, uh, are a big time real estate investor. Is that correct? Uh, yes. Yeah. Invest in real estate. Yes. So, you're familiar, obviously, with the professional real estate investor status, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah so, so sure. here's like just one kind of idea, right, for your for your listeners. So, say that your listener is going for public service loan forgiveness, and they're interested in real estate investing. So, you know, if you are fixing up and flipping houses, you know, if you have a spouse who's a professional real estate investor status, who's got that status, then you can write off those paper losses against active income, right? Mm -hmm. And public service loan forgiveness is 10% of your, of your income, right? Mm -hmm. So if you can get that taxable income down lower, you could be heavily involved in investing in real estate. Your spouse is the one that maintains that professional real estate investor status. And you've saved yourself tens of thousands of dollars, maybe even per year on your student loan payments that will eventually be forgiven because of the public service loan forgiveness program. So that's just like one more niche specific loophole. Mm -hmm. And there's a gazillion loopholes. And my experience is physicians have the mo some of the most complicated options when it comes to student loans, right? I think some people think it's as easy as just put it on the revised pay as you earn program, which is wow. this program, you know, you pay 10% of your income and get a little bit of an interest subsidy. And then that's all you have to do. But there's so many options for people to save so much money and accelerate their path to financial independence rapidly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really good tip. Um, what's interesting is, uh, you know, I graduated from medical school 2007. They didn't have any of this uh, income-based program. They didn't have public student loan forgiveness, none of that. And uh, what was interesting was we got no advice on uh, financial advice until the, um, the uh, final month of medical school before we were graduating. We had um, an individual talk about, you know, uh, the number one thing that mo all medical students were doing at the time was consolidating their um, their student loans so they can lock in a low interest rate. So it looks like the field has greatly expanded. So I know for a lot of listeners, um, you know, can you ex explain like, you know, all the different, I know there's income base, there's public student loan forgiveness, and, you know, the, the, I understand that the options are are expanding. So, you know, give us a, you know, brief background and where, where the field is going. Well, let me start out with people like you that went to medical school or, you know, when you went to medical school. So there's this public service loan forgiveness program, right? Yeah. Public service loan forgiveness, you have to pay for 10 years while working full-time at a nonprofit or government employer uh, on an income-driven repayment plan. So those income-driven repayment plans for things like income-based repayment, pay as you earn, revised pay as you earn are three examples of that. The opportunity that exists for peers of yours, Chris, that you went to medical school with is there's a lot of 40 something year old physicians that had those loans, you know, from before 2010 that are not qualifying for public service loan forgiveness, right? Mm -hmm. Well, President Biden passed a limited time waiver called the PSLF waiver due to the pandemic. He did this October 2021. It's good until October 
of 2022. Uh-huh. And what it does is allows old loans to qualify if you are employed at a qualifying employer. So what we're seeing for some 40-year-old clients of ours right now is they have loans at like 2.8%. They consolidated them in 2006, right? Uh-huh. They've been working at an academic medical center and making payments on like a 30-year extended type of plan. A lot of those clients right now were able to tell them that they can consolidate their loans into a direct consolidation loan and get all of it forgiven tax free. Uh-huh. Wow. That's a, that's that's crazy. We we had we had like a Harvard MD who had 200,000, you know, that was like a, at a two something percent that was FFEL federal debt. You know, she took it out in like 2005 the other day. Literally with one like consolidation application at studentaid.gov, like after getting a plan from us, she was able to consolidate the whole thing and it's all gone tax-free. Mm-hmm. That's, 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 that's the kind of like life-changing stuff, right? Like everybody wants to find the next Tesla or the mm-hmm. next like crypto that's going to hit or, you know, the, the next like Austin, Texas, right? Like that's what everybody's like focused on. Uh-huh. And that stuff is, is really hard. You know, even people that are like deep experts, like struggle with that. Right. Yeah. Whereas with student loans, like we're, I think, you know, it's fair to say, I think we're either one of the most or the most like knowledgeable about student loans in the country because of the number of plans that we've done. So there's like opportunities like this, not for everybody, but there's opportunities like this where like a random, you know, person that has 200,000 of debt could have it all forgiven tax free. Uh-huh. And they literally have to do one thing. I mean, that that's like the most exciting thing in personal finance. That's why I love doing it is because it's, you know, you can transform somebody's life in a way that you can't with so many other fields of personal finance. So I know that you asked specifically, you know, what is the lay of the land? So I apologize for kind of diving in with one specific example. So like quick lay of the land, you know, there's public service loan forgiveness, which is a good option for a lot of people that are academic medicine, VA type people, right? There's refinancing, which is a great option for people that, you know, join a private, you know, private practice like orthopedic group, right, that know that they need to pay the debt back and 6% with the government's like ridiculously high interest. So you can refinance it to like 2.8 or 2.5 or something mm-hmm. with a private lender. And that's something we help a ton of people do. And then the third path is a family medicine doctor who's in private practice who owes at least twice her income in student debt. That mm-hmm. person might qualify for forgiveness with a, a longer period of time than the public service programs. The public service programs, 10 years, there's programs for forgiveness that are like 20 or 25. So what, what we do for a physician client is we do a one-time plan for a, a few hundred bucks and we figure out, you know, which of those three plans makes the most sense and how to optimize it and how to save the most money. Mm-hmm. And, and that's, that's kind of our, our typical savings for like a physician client is maybe like a, like a I'm, I'm not a car guy. I have to admit Chris, but like a Mercedes, like what is, what is like the mid-level, like five series? Is that like $60,000? I don't know. That's like our, that's like our typical projected savings is around like 60, 70,000. Mm-hmm. Some people, we don't save anything. Maybe 10% of people, we look at their situation. We just confirm that, Hey, you're on the best path possible. And then some of the people like that Harvard MD client that we had that, that was in her forties, we saved 200,000, like that they wouldn't have identified it without talking to us. So, um, so that's the lay of the land, right? There's like three big paths, paying it off. Forgiveness in the private sector, forgiveness in the public sector. Mm-hmm. Wow! Yeah, you've actually you dropped a lot of that's that's really uh, exciting because you've you know you get dropped you know two gems. One is um, tax savings, and the second is um, just um, you know the way of the the lay of the land and how you can save. You know, at least you know you may not be able to you know say you know write off two hundred thousand dollars in student loan, but at least you can save tens or twenty you know tens of thousands. You know, which is significant and adds up. So, um, you know, I, I know a lot of physicians are, will be interested in this. Um, and, uh, what, what are some of the common mistakes that, that you see with, uh, you know, clients that come to you? Not filing their taxes the right way. So there's a lot of ways to reduce your payments. So, you know, if you file jointly, you're basically going to be paying 10% of your household income. Some cases you can file separately and exclude your spouse from the payment. There's a lot of loopholes surrounding that in terms of what state you live in. There might be specific rules. Sometimes we're able to get people significantly lower payments. They live in Texas or California because of like nuances in the tax code there. Mm-hmm. So there's there's situations like that where they're filing taxes the wrong way. I guess another mistake is is they 
reply to the mailer in the mail from a refinancing company. So that's going to happen a lot with the the end of the payment pause after two years of no payments. P- you know, people are going to just you know go to the postcard they got in the mail and apply to refinance their loans. Our site's got a thousand dollars and up cash bonuses with all of the national lenders. So um, studentloanplanner.com's got the best bonuses for anywhere really. And that doesn't affect the interest rate. So that, I guess that's a mistake, I guess. That people miss out, you know, on a thousand dollars when they're refinancing, um, mm-hmm. you know, and then other, other mistakes would just be, let's see, maybe not realizing that they're actually a forgiveness candidate instead of a payoff candidate. I see that a lot because there's this attitude in the medical community that, Hey, you know, you got to do PSLF or you got to pay it back. And that's the only two paths. And, and that's actually not true. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. So yeah, I know a lot of um. So uh, the other thing is, um, you know, for the physician cohort that you know before 2010, what are some of the steps that they can start to take to, um, you know, besides you know obviously contacting you and you know in- inquiring and all that, but what are some of the mistakes that you'll see like visit phys- the uh, before the 2010 cohort that they that they make. They haven't bothered to certify their employment. So studentaid.gov slash PSLF is this website you can go to and add all of the employment you've ever had that's in a public sector employer. So, you know, nonprofit hospitals, VA, um, you know, anywhere basically besides like HCA or tenant or, you know, the, you know, a, a, for, a private practice group, you know, would qualify uh, for, for public service loan forgiveness. So they need to go there and they need to certify their income. I mean, their, 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 their employment. Um, because, you know, if you don't qualify for PSLF or weren't expecting to, you might have never told the government about your employment that might count. And then maybe you could qualify for forgiveness right now. You don't even realize it. Mm. So, you know, that that's 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 a that's a, a place to start. And and then, you know, since it's October of 2022 is the deadline for this, mm. e- even if you don't know what kind of loans you have, you could probably still submit your employment and at least they would be aware of your employment. And, you know, if you need to do something like consolidate your loans or something like that to become eligible, at least they would know about it. So that, that would be, a, I would say, an easy step to take, an action step to take that anybody could just do. That's awesome. All right. Well, um, what are some ways that um, were like uh, some resources that will help them as well as um, I know a lot of um, my followers would be interested in getting in touch with you? Yeah. So, I mean, resources to, to use, I mean, the student aid website's got a good payment simulator. I'm biased. I think ours is better. So you could use both of them to figure out what your payment's going to be. So student, studentloanplanner.com, if you look at the menu, we have a calculators section and you can see all the different kinds of calculators we have on our site that really get into some granular level detail and on, on what, what your payments might be. Mm-hmm. Um, and ter- other, other things like we give away our uh, our, our Excel-based calculator to people who join our, our email list. We've got the Student Loan Planner podcast where I talk about, you know, the different kinds of updates with PSLF and with loan repayment starting and servicers getting fired, all the stuff that's going on. You know, we cover that in, the, in our Student Loan Planner podcast. So that's easily searchable if you just search Student Loan Planner in the, you know, in the, in the platform you're listening to this on. Mm-hmm. And the, I guess the, the final two things is just uh, resources are, the refinance page. So that's studentloanplanner.com slash refi. That is the thousand dollar cash bonuses I was talking about. And the final thing is just getting getting the plan. So that's studentloanplanner.com slash help. So if you don't know if you're like, I don't know what to do, studentloanplanner.com slash help. And the uh, the important thing there is, you know, book a plan, even if it's a little ways out. We're um, kind of getting a little overwhelmed by the demand. So like during the pandemic, you know, payments and interest were paused. So the demand for student loan planning was there, but not as much. Mm-hmm. So we would maybe do like 100 to 120 plans a month during the pandemic. I, you know, I say pandemic is still going, but, you know, during the, the past two years. And then now we're doing like 300 a month. And that's why we're having to hire three additional people because it's just getting kind of a little overwhelming, which means that like, if, if you're thinking about booking a plan, we don't collect a credit card or anything like that up front. So you could like reserve one and then cancel it if you change your mind. Mm-hmm. So um, that's why I would go to the studentloanplanner.com slash help and, and schedule a time to talk to one of our team members to, to get that custom plan. So you know what you're doing with your loans and not missing out on anything. 
Awesome. Yeah, you've uh, you've you've uh, gave so much advice and so much experience and dropped so many gems. And uh, for all the listeners, uh, Travis's um, resources will be included in the show notes. Be sure to click on the links. Um, you know, there's tons of stuff um, navigating the student loan. Um, and you know, the end of the year, you know, a lot of you know medical students that will be graduating soon. So. Um, thanks so much. Uh, do you have any last parting words of wisdom, advice uh, before we call it a day? I would just say, just at least think about your loans. I know it's kind of scary. <laughs> it's the last thing you want to do is think about your debt because it's just <laughs> got so much else on your mind. Like, you know, you've got all the stress of, of the pandemic and you know, helping with patients and, you know, just some of the people that are in training or dealing with like the terrible hours of residency and fellowship. Right. So like, thinking about the loans seems like it's like the last priority when in fact, like once you realize what you're doing, then it becomes something that's not a burden anymore and allows you to be a little bit more relaxed in confronting all those other things you're confronting. So I would encourage listeners to just get a plan. It doesn't have to be with us. You could use the free resources and make up your own mind, you know, or you could get a, a plan with an expert like us. So I just would ask people to at least think about it a little bit. And, and it, it's going to, it's going to be okay if you do. Yeah. Yeah. You said it so wisely. One of my friends and colleagues, he was uh, saying, you know, just, you know, at least look at the numbers uh, that way you, at least you're familiar with it. And then from there, make a plan. So, you know, as long as you're sticking to the plan and it's a good plan, uh, it sounds like you have a lot of resources um, and you, you know, you just, you'll do fine. So thanks so much. Um, we'll make sure all of our uh, listeners get in contact with you and um, we hope to have you on future episodes as a future guest. Thank you so much. Appreciate it, Chris. Well, I hope you really enjoyed that fantastic episode with our special guest this week. Just remember as a shout out to this week's sponsor, Dr. Heather Fork, MD of the Doctors Crossing, who has come out with her new online course devoted to teaching you how to leverage social media to network online effectively for your next job, your career, or as a side income. Again, social media is very valuable in today's society. It can be used for marketing, advertising, selling, communication with your followers, growing your brand, influence followers, as well as networking. So don't miss out. It's really important in today's age to really leverage technology especially in the COVID age. So go to the link in the show notes below and we'll see you back next week. I'm excited that you made it for another episode. You are truly the best. If you've been following the show for a while, you know that my passion is to bring you the education you need to find your path to financial freedom. Please come back week after week for new content, new resources, and great guests. Until then, if you haven't already, please be sure to check out the website www.drchrisluemdphd.com for more support. I'll see you next week. Thank you.